Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.
say hallelujah I'm still standing by the grace of God the devil took his best shot but I'm still standing by the grace of God praise the Lord everybody we are thankful for that song from Steve on we're grateful it's a very timely song for such a time as this with so many things happening and so much sickness in the land and a lot of evil things going on but we're still standing by the grace of God I want to thank and praise the Lord for our Bishop uh, Bishop Ernest L Pendleton and Lady Pendleton our resident Bishop uh, Bishop Michael Hanna second assistant presiding bishop of the PAW, our chairman, Dr. Lamont Turner, our vice chairman, Suffolk Bishop Marvin Jenkins, all the regional Suffolk bishops and district elders and pastors that make up this great council, D.C., Delaware, Maryland, all the first ladies, all the auxiliary leaders. We have a lot to be thankful for. And we're grateful for this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're rejoicing and we're glad in it. I do also want to thank and give a shout out to my wife, Lady Lynette Twilly, and the entire Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries Church for their undying support. God is a good God. God is worthy of a praise I just feel like giving him some glory today. He is worthy of all the praise. Because when I look back over my life and I see where the Lord has brought me from, I'm so grateful to say I'm still standing. I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. It's been one of the sentiments of my heart. And I share it with our ministry all the time that we could have been taken out Many times, but God has been good to us. And we sure, surely should show him some love, some adoration, and we should definitely give him some praise. I want to move right along with our service tonight and move right out of your way. We won't be before you long, but I believe the Lord has given us a word out of Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verses 12 through 14. And if you have your Bibles, I always say that I know we have the uh, apps on our phones and some of us are sitting at our iPads and our laptops and what have you. Uh, but I ask that you pull it out and pull up this word with me and read it with me. Because I believe as you read through it, the Lord will speak to your heart at the same time. And we will all be edified by what God is about to say. Allow me to just take a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, for your kindness, and for your tender mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to travel over dangerous highways and byways. Lord God, we know that the enemy is on our trail, but Lord, we're still standing by your grace, and we're grateful right now. We ask that you look down upon your servant tonight. Lord God, that you remove me out of the way that you might get the glory. Touch my tongue, touch my mouth. Lord, that I might say the words for the ears the, hears, the ears for these hearers to hear and receive, Lord. We thank you for all that you're about to do. Lord God, we're doing this, Lord God, for your grace, for your love and your kindness. We're so careful to give thy name the praise this day. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' mighty name, 
And I'm believing everybody saying amen and amen to that prayer. Out of 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, verses 12 through 14, and as I read it into your hearing, it says, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I've heard thy prayer, and have I chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And all God's people once again say amen to the reading of his word. And for my subject tonight, I will just leave you with this thought and I'll probably be pulling. I sometimes get into a habit. I always add some subjects. But needless to say, tonight I'm saying if my people, if my people, if my people from the 14th verse and it says and if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins. And I, he says he will heal their lands. I, I, I look at this word, uh, if my people, and, and, and in that uh, first three words of that uh, verse, it has the words if. And I, <laughs> I, I began to look at such a small word, if, and it has such a humongous effect on the rest of that scripture. It, it really sets the tone for what God is about to tell to or say to Solomon. He's already shared with him things or the sentiments of God's heart. Let's look back. Solomon is, was given the task of building the temple. Solomon was also allowed to build the palace for the king. So here we are 20 years later, and the Lord is now speaking to Solomon a second time. He's telling Solomon some things just for his good because Solomon had just had an awesome task. Have you ever had a job, had to do something that when you finish, oh, you just want to sit back and rest. You just want to sit back and lay back, and if you continue just to lay back, the enemy is going to creep in. But the Lord spoke to him at a strategic time. He spoke to him after he had completed the task, after everything was done. Remember, they had just had the Feast of Harvest. They had just had, I'm going to say, a two-week shindig, if you want to say it. They just had a good time. They were praising the Lord. They were worshiping God. They were giving him praise. And now the Lord comes to him, and he talks to him, he talks to him, and he tells him, some things that just like for you and I, he gives him some promises. But before he gives the promises, he sets him up and lets him know there's some conditions. There's some things that you have to worry about. There's some things that you're going to have to ensure. So as you see in verse 12 and verse 13, he begins to talk about things that could happen. You know, even for saved folk, there are things that are happening in our life. Look, the sun, the rain, it shines on the just and the unjust. Uh, this virus that is going around is hitting unrighteous and righteous. So the things are happening that can take us out. So God has let them say, even if I do that. Even if I let the, the, the heavens that they bring no rain, even if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, he's letting them know that if my people that are called by my name, if they, they, they only got to do is humble themselves and pray. Uh, he gives them four things. And... Look, I'm going to tell you, these are really, they sound easy, but they're difficult sometimes for people. To humble yourself, ah, to step back, 
to be willing to accept the fact that you ain't all that. Don't show no ar arrogance. Being one to really step back and know that you are a child of God. And, and these are the characteristics that he's showing us, the characteristics of his people. He says, my people that are called by my name, if they would just do some things, if they do these things, the characteristics tell them what they would have to do to be considered his people. God is an awesome God. He's looking for, he's chosen a chosen generation of people that is going to be called out. I know Joshua, he puts it in his own words when he was coming through. He let it be known that you can worship, you can play with all of them, the Amalekites, anybody you want. He says, but for me and my house, we're going to serve the one God, the one that I know that woke me up this morning, the one that clothed me in my right mind, the one that gave me the activities of my limbs, the same one that took Moses, for, oh, come on, talk to me, somebody, the same one that let them cross the Red Sea on dry land. I'm going to serve him till I die. I'm going to give him praise. So he puts this little word, if, if. I thought at one time I was going to preach the if factor. The if factor is you. It's you. God is looking for you to be his people. This word, this message is to church folk. This is to saints. He's talking to his people. And he wants you to know that you got to have the characteristics that will help you live this life. You can't play with this thing. God is a good God. God wants us to make it through the end. We see throughout the, the Bible, this word if, as small as it is, is used quite a few times. Someone found it very simple to go out and Google it. And they said it's used in the King James Version 1,622 times. Ah, you say, that's not a whole lot. There are some words with more, but a little word like that that changes things. Look what he says in verse John uh, 1 and 9. He says, if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, it tells us that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of unrighteousness. First John 1 and 7 says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with the other. I like what Matthew says in 9 and 21. He says, if I may but just touch the him, it's a condition. If I can, if I can get through all the things that are hindering me, all I got to do is touch the man. And healing will come. Somebody ought to say healing will come. Healing will come. So if a small world that carries this if, it carries such huge weight. It's a massive and enormous word that some, you know, everything else depends upon it. Just two letters. A valve and a consonant. It means so much. Colossians 3 and 1, he says, if you be risen with Christ. Speak those things which are above. He continues to tell us in his words. So after Solomon had reigned for 24 years, God is now speaking to him, telling him things, sharing with him, giving him this promise. How many know they need a promise from the Lord? My former pastor, the late district elder plumber, he would always tell us to get a promise from God and then just hold him to it to hold him to his promise. God will never let you down. He will do it. All you have to do is hold him to it. Now, in your holding, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to walk upright before him. He gave us commandments to follow. It's important that we follow the books of the Bible, follow the basic instructions before leaving this earth, follow the word of God. Hey, God's timing, I told you, it was perfect. Solomon was in a, a very precarious way. This is the same Solomon that had all the wisdom. The same one. Can you imagine women coming to you, two ladies coming to you with a baby? Both of them claiming to be the mother. Him not knowing and 
through his wisdom, he says, cut the baby in half and give him part to each. Who would have thought of such a thing but a wise man? I mean, he knew in his heart, I believe, that the, mo the true mother would come forth. And the true mother did come forth. She came, not like some of us, she didn't fight for him. She says, give it, because she pre preferred the baby to live than to die. That's a mother. But the wisdom of Solomon he saw it. He felt it. He operated it. Look, people from far and from near and far went to see Solomon. Sheba, you know, Sheba went. She traveled miles and miles just to hear and see what somebody had told her. I've heard a lot about you, Solomon. Look at all the stuff that you've done. You've done. And look, here's the part that blows my mind. It's more than I can even imagine. They just told me half of it. And half was bad enough. It's enough to blow your mind. But you've done more. Wisdom. And that's Solomon at this point. And that Solomon had some issues. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you he was here. <laughs> all them concubines, he didn't need all that. He had some issues. But God saw, he knew his, knew his heart. So he gives him uh, promises. He gives him promises. Look, I don't know, but I, I need promises from God. I, I need God to continue to bless me. I need God to continue to strengthen me. I need God each and every day. Every day I wake up, I need his presence. I need to, him to walk with me and talk with me. I was telling the church a few weeks ago, I told him how the Lord had given me the mindset. I was trying to lose a little weight, and I began to walk three miles in the morning. I was worried about the outward appearance. I was worried about my physical appearance on the outside. But God, as I began to walk, began to share with me and told me it's the inside that I'm worried about. Fix that up and the outside will follow. So he gave me a mindset. I started taking my phone with me and I started listening to scriptures as I walked. And God began to bless in a mighty way. I'm telling you, when you put God first, He tells you, seek ye first the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. When you seek the kingdom and his righteousness, God starts throwing in all kind of benefits. He starts throwing in all kind of things that you need. You didn't even know you needed, but he gave it to you before you even needed it. That's the kind of God that we serve. He's an awesome God. So he begins to deal with Solomon and at a perfect time. And he, he appears to Solomon by night. There's something about God appearing up at night. There's something about God appearing up in the darkness. But even in the darkness, lights come through. Y'all ain't hearing me. He still shows up. And he blesses. And he changes things. He gives Solomon instructions. He lets him know that he gave him these promises for his people. And all the promises that were from God's heart. And let me tell you that in the 14th verse, he's letting us and his people know he is the only living and true God, the only Savior and Lord of the universe. Therefore, they must, become, they must be his followers. They got to follow him through thick and thin. You can't be a part-time lover with my God. You have to be true to him. You got to humble yourself. You got, instead of rebelling against him, you have to change your whole mindset. Stop being so stubborn and insisting on living as the world live. You got to obey his commandments. And you got to take some pray time, praying time. You got to seek him while he may be found. Praying is a very important part of the child of God's life. We got to pray without ceasing. We got to be able to pray beyond. He told them, his disciples, y'all pray here. I'm going a little further. Came back. You couldn't even pray for an hour. Something wrong with that picture. You need to pray until something happens. You need to push all night prayer has been cut back. Even if you had all night prayer, it was more nap time than prayer time. But God is looking for us to change our ways, church. He's looking for us to continue to seek him in a day and a time like this. Look, we are in the midst 
of a pandemic. It's such a bad thing. People are all upset, nervous. Some people are acting crazy. Some people don't know what's happening. But it's a deadly thing out there. And if you don't trust the Lord, that know that he will heal the land. Now, look, let me tell you, when he's talking about healing the land, it may be the sickness that you're feeling, or it could be your house that he's going to work on. Maybe it's your body that he's going to heal. He's going to do a lot of heal. It might be your finances that he might heal, but God will turn things around in your life if you do the pre prerequisites. After you do all those things, you know, when you were in college, you couldn't take algebra two before taking algebra one. Well, you could, but you probably fail. You couldn't take trigonometry without taking algebra one and algebra two. That's when I went. I don't know. It might have changed it. But you didn't take. You had to go through the prerequisites of each course. But God is giving us today to be considered his people. You've got to follow the instructions that he, you got to be humble. You got to pray. You got to seek his face. And then you got to turn. Come look, the wicked man is out there. Turn from your foolishness. Turn from all the wicked things, the things that are trying to pull you down. And you got to reach out and reach out for God because he is the one that can pick you up and bring you up out of it. God is a good God. He wants to bless us, bless you spiritually. And if he blesses you spiritually, you'll start seeing some of the natural stuff come in. He will provide for you on a daily basis. How many know God provides on a daily basis? Look, he showed David, even he says, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death. He put a thing in his heart that he didn't have any more fear. He didn't have to worry about things. You got to put God first. You got to give God all the glory. You got to consider the conditions that God put before you. No matter what a person's occupation or his position in life, if he confess and humble himself before the Lord, praying and seeking him and repenting of his wicked ways, the Lord will give, forgive and heal both that repentant sinner and the nation. I don't know about you, but this nation needs healing. This nation needs healing. We are going through so many different things at this time. And God is letting us know that he has not been pleased with our actions. It's time for us to be more proactive. And he's telling us a praying person is active. All you got to do is ask. Ask the Father. And God will bless you if you're sincere about what you ask. I'm trusting that the Lord will move the church in a mighty way if my people that are called by my name, if they will just do these things, God's going to change some stuff around. He will make a difference. He will make a difference. He will open doors where there seem to be none. He will do it. That's how God operates. That's what he does best. You have to believe that God will do it. You have to be obedient. When you're obedient, you can receive the blessings of God. Just as Solomon was warned by God, so are we warned. God demands obedience. He demands that we keep his commandments. If we keep them, we will be blessed. That seems like a simple formula to me. You do. You ask, but God does it as long as you follow the instructions. Our sisters, they know about baking and cooking and things of that nature. When you start improvising on a recipe, you're subject to make a mess. Ah, you build, try to bake a pound cake and leave some of the ingredients out or substitute something that's not right. You substituting a mess. So in God's word, if you start substituting his word, you are just setting yourself up for failure. 
You have to believe in him. You have to bless, uh, do the things that he asks, and you will be blessed. If we disobey, because there are conditions, if you disobey God, uh, you can expect chastisement and judgment, and it's going to fall upon you. That's if you disobey God. You can't expect his hand not to spank you and smack you. Look, that's what any father would do. But he does it in love. He does it in a way that no other father can. He's the type of father that shows great love and great desire for his people. He wants us to be successful. He does. He told us in his word. Joshua again. He says, if you take this book of the law, if you meditate on it, not sometimes, day and night, he says, you're going to have some great success. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for the Lord to bless because I'm going to meditate on his word day and night. Why? Because I serve an awesome God. I serve a God that's high and he looks low. But even when he looks low, he's looking to find us on our knees, praying, seeking, and asking for his deliverance. He's such a good God. That name, the name is so important. It's a name that's above every name. It's a name that every knee's going to bow, every tongue's going to confess. It's going to let it be known that he is. But I love about God, he allows us to use that name to cast out, to heal, to bring deliverance to those that are down and downtrodden. God transfers that power to us and allows us to operate because of the faith that he has in us and because of the faith we have in him. He's such an awesome God, and he wants us to continue to live this life. So the biggest if in the whole Bible is found to me in this second, second Chronicles, in this 7 and 14, and it's telling us that we need what we need and how we should get it. Yet, it is the greatest barricade to growth. So, because many times we get stuck on something. Now, see, God, he's given you the word, saying, if my people. So, if you're my people and I give you the instructions that you need for your healing and for your deliverance, you should be filled with joy. You should be just like David was when he brought the ark back home. Do you remember? He got so happy that he danced. His wife looked out and she was upset, but she didn't really understand what it means to have an intimate relationship with God. When you love somebody, oh, Lord, have mercy, and they do something for you. The adoration that you can show is so unusual. It's, uh, it's, nobody can hold you back. But you got to, you have to give him some praise. It's, it's praise time. It's a time to glorify his great name. It's a time to magnify God for the good things that he's done. Even when he chastised me, I know it's for my good. I might not understand it, but I know it's for my good. I don't see it, but it's still for my good. I know he's bringing judgment or chastisement upon me for a reason. It's to straighten me up, to allow me to walk right, to allow me to talk right, to allow me to show love to my brother and my sister. That's why I'm saying that if my people, which are called by my name, he's given us the instructions. I need you to humble yourself, step back. Tell somebody I'm sorry. I want you to pray until something happens. I want you to find me. Look for me. I'm right here where you need me. You remember the disciples were on that ship. The storm rose. It came up. They didn't know what to do. They got all fettered. Went down to the boat. The Lord parted the boat and asked, Why? Are you sleeping when we're about to die? Look, I'm going to tell you right now. As long as you have Jesus on board, you have nothing to worry about. 
is when you lose him. That's when you need to worry. When you can't find him because of your foolishness, that's when you, gotta, that's when you should be worried. But God, who is rich in mercy, his mercy, his mercy. Jeremiah put it in a very simple way. He said, it is of the Lord's mercy mm, that we are not consumed. That is compassion. His love for us, it fails not. But I can count on it every morning. How many know they need new mercy? I need new mercy. You can't never use up all the mercy that God has. He's going to bless you. He's going to give you, show you mercy. Mercy. But it's to his people that are called by his name. I'm so glad to be a Jesus only and only Jesus type person. I'm so grateful that I went down in his name one day and he filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'm a Jesus only person. Nobody can do me like Jesus. I say nobody, nobody. The songwriters, they put it together. They look to the, and I couldn't find nobody because there's nobody like my Jesus. But you only realize that if you are in the family. Look, I'm telling you right now, when you have a family like, look, look, royalty, that's what we're in. Royal priesthood. We're a chosen generation. When you think about it, you can't embarrass the king. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That means you just can't do anything you want. His name has status. Has status. His name has grace. And you just can't walk over his name. So if you are of the, one of his people, you got to watch how you talk. Watch how you act. Watch how you live because you're a child of the king. Just like the prodigal son. He went away. Went off. Give me my blessing right now. Dad, give me my loot right now. When he came to himself, he didn't even feel worthy to come. I'm not worthy to come back. But ain't Jesus. Look at how good Jesus is. Look what the father did with open arms. That's how God does us when we've turned our back. But when you repent and come back, he's there with open arms, ready to receive you. Just like the prodigal son's father did. People will get mad. They'll get upset. But it does not take away what the father's love had for his son. That's what it's all about. When you th start thinking about the people of God. I'm grateful to be in the family. Church, it's so important that we follow the instructions that God has provided for us. It's time out for us doing as the children of Israel did in the days of, of, Jew, of the judges, doing what was right in their own sight. It's time for us to know what God requires of us. And he gives them to us in simple ways, simple terms. It's not deep, but it is tough because we have to step back, take ourselves out of the equation, and lean and depend on our everlasting God. One of the few preachers that I've enjoyed over the years, she's no longer pastoring, but she taught me a very deep word, simple, but it's deep. When you're looking at things and she just told you to consider your ways. Consider how you speak to people. Consider how you, you're living. Consider what you're doing. You can destroy someone else. And God wants you to be more than that because we are more than conquerors. So church, in these last days, if anything that you take away from this message today is that if you're going to be a person of God, if you're going to be called by that name, that means you got to live up to the reputation of God. And God's reputation is beyond measure. 
David put it like this. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That's how we have to get. In closing, I'll just say we are peculiar people, but we are the people of God. And this message and who he was talking to is for the church. It's for saints. We don't have or we do have the answer to all the ills of this world, but we are not exercising them. And it's all wrapped up in our God and our relationship with him and our worshiping him. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And at this time, I'll turn the remainder of the service back into the hands of Dr. Lamont Turner. God bless you.